Please pray with me, Spirit of Wisdom, minister to us, your people, we pray. May only truth be spoken, may only truth be heard. Amen. So we come to do some baptisms today, and I was thinking, you know, what relevance is there to this Reign of Christ Sunday? It sounds pretty tribal. And part of the problem with the church since the 14th century is that its leadership liked to spread the idea that unless you were a Christian, you were in some kind of peril for your souls. In fact, a lot of people bring children to be baptized just kind of as a security mechanism, just in case, you know, you gotta, you gotta follow that way to get into heaven or to have God's favor. But uh, that's not what Jesus taught. I mean, if we read the Gospels, the Gospel of John does teach that. But the other Gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, Jesus never once asked anybody to believe in him. Jesus always asked people to love. In fact, in the first Gospel of Mark, Jesus, every time he heals somebody or does something, says, don't tell anybody I did it because that comes from God. And we need to get back to that early understanding in the Christian church. Because what happened, if we go to our next slide, is we see the image of Christ the King. And wow, that doesn't do anything for me, I'll tell you. Uh, you know, it's a sign of wealth, of power, it's a sign of the wealthy and, uh, and the church leaders colluding together. It's a sign of making up a problem that doesn't exist, that you're born in sin, and getting people focused on that in, instead of the fact that the leaders are robbing them blind, and they're a bunch of hypocrites, and they're telling the people to do one thing while they do another. And the good news, though, is when you think of the word Christ, we think of Christ as Jesus' second name. But Christ isn't anybody's name. Christ is a, means anointed, anointed one. And uh, what Jesus taught is that we are all anointed. And we're going to anoint uh, our children and Anne today because we are born anointed. It's almost uh, an image that someone gave me was when a woman's water breaks, it's the anointing of a child being born to be divine presence in the world. And that's why in the New Testament it talks about the church as the people of God, as the body of Christ. What does the word Christian, Christ, anointed? So you see, uh, Christ, Christ and anointing is a universal reality. All of us have that capacity to live in love. And so we celebrate that. Slide. That's more what uh, Jesus probably looked like. <laughs> Slide. And of course, we hear the stories. Jesus was all about caring for those who were excluded, those who were devalued, those who were not, didn't have the privilege of primarily rich people and white people. And uh, at that time, it would have been the Roman people, so the Roman citizens. And of course, so that's our ministry. That's what we're to be about. And atheists are a part of that too. You know, we prefer kind atheists around here over mean Christians. And we've got some wonderful atheists who are part of our congregations. And so the point is, our job is to be that divine presence we've already been created to be. Baptism doesn't create it. It celebrates that it exists. Just like your birthdays don't make you older. <laughs> your birthdays celebrate the fact that you were born, that you are getting older, and that everybody loves you and wants to throw a party for you. So that's what we're doing today. We're celebrating a reality that is true with you. You are special. You are divine. You are unique. Whatever your creed, whatever your religion, whatever your philosophies, and when we live out of those values, then what we call God, that spirit of love, moves through us. Slide. And of course, there's, you know, whether it's mental illness or people who are ill, Jesus spent his life ministering that love. Slide. And, of course, he challenged the leaders who later created a system that was just like the one he hated, that were exploiting the poor, uh, making them feel guilty. Jesus said, you put burdens on people. And the early Christian movement was a liberation movement. Did you hear all the scriptures today? There's no law that controls us. There's no person that controls us. It's love. Anything that's kind and loving, you can do. And if somebody tells you not to, you got the right to do it anyway. And it's so important that our kids grow up knowing a couple things. Number one, that they are divine. They were born good. They don't have to prove to anybody that they have value and worth. 
It's so important because we live in a marketplace where everybody's trying to tell us who to be and what to do to make us guilty, to pressure us with their expectations. No, 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 no. And good parents don't bring up their children to be carbon copies of them. They bring them up and encourage them with values so that they can determine who they are and discover the amazing people they've been created to be. And then, of course, the other thing is we need to be in communities that celebrate these values. Because so much of the messages we get, I mean, you know, we have people hating their bodies, we've got people hating food, we've got uh, men being told they have to be this way to be a real man. I mean, these pressures have always been with us. And they can make us neurotic. And they can make us depressed. And so to be in a community that realizes that we are all divine, and that we're all there for one another, that also is what baptism is, because baptism was the original way you joined into the Christian community. And so we celebrate that we offer that kind of community today. And we celebrate the divinity that we all share as the body of Christ by whatever label you wish to use. And so we'll move now into our time of baptism as we sing a song. Uh, what, oh yeah, well there's a good picture of, of uh, the anointed ones, the Christ today, all right? And we're a part of that too. Is there any other slides I got there? 